I'm Claudia Herber. I am a gourd artist and a teacher, and I'm now living in McMinnville. After traveling all, gosh, six years in our motorhome, we decided to settle here, originally from California. So uh, let's see, background. Um, always interested in art, even as a little kid. My favorite, most exquisite memory is going to kindergarten and seeing that they actually had paint, paper, and an easel. Best day of my life. <laughs> so, and it just went from there. Um, I, did, I did formal art training uh, for many years, even after I was um, old and gray, had kids and did all my things, I still continued to take classes in watercolor or oil or figure painting or drawing, all of those things. So when I discovered gourds about 20 years ago, um, it's been a love affair ever since. It's a great way for me to um, execute all my art fantasies. So, and it's a continual push of seeing what I can do. I'm not an ordinary, I'm, I guess I can say that. I'm not an ordinary gourd artist. I'm not interested in, um, hmm, let me think. I'm not real interested in the native art look of gourds. I'm interested in fine art. So I'm interested in seeing if you can take an ordinary, beautiful, garden-grown gourd and turn it into a piece that a museum wants. Okay. So this gourd, this gourd started out as a very humble vegetable growing in a field. And it grows on the vine for a year, and then the vine dies. There we go. So the vine dies, and you... Um, take it off, and then it sits for another year to dry. So there, therefore you get this wood-like surface. This particular gourd had a top on it. It was about like this. So I cut it off. I cut it. Uh, this one, I dug this little trench, filled it with beautiful um, pieces of rock that actually a friend of mine from Arizona gave me. And um, you clean out the inside. Now this inside is full of little rocks, just because it's pretty to look at. So, um, but the whole inside would be cleaned out and of course uh, sealed so that you don't, um, you actually will, let's say put it this way, you um, will have a piece that will last another 100 years. So cutting them, cutting them open, putting finishes on them, decorating them. Um, this one you can see, I, t I have the special carver, so I get to do this filigree work and um, cut, paint, whatever fun thing that the gourd says to me. But no, and this one is not opened at all. This one, see, this one still has the seeds in it because well, she just didn't get to get opened up. <laughs> I like gourds that come from California and Arizona because, because they are thick skinned. I don't know if you can see this, but this is very thick in here. It's about a half an inch thick, and which makes a big difference. Um, for instance, um, um, I don't have one here. It's, the gourds that are grown here in Oregon are thinner skinned. I don't know why, they just are. But there are a lot of people who still are growing them. But I like them, I order them from a couple of farms. Mm -hmm. The lady behind me probably took about a week to do. Um, this one is three or four days. Uh, you know, it just sort of depends on how the spirit moves me, how quickly we go. Um, and I'm lucky because I have, a, I have a space to be able to create. Right, there isn't any instant gratification, although I'm, I'm truly an instant gratification person. And I find that um, it doesn't matter. I get in the flow of the whole thing, and um, there is going to be something beautiful at the end of that, and I know that. Are you a gourd artist? Oh, there's a huge community of gourd artists, absolutely. Um, right now, 
I have started what I'm calling the Northwest Gorders, and they're a group of people that get together every month and share their art, share their experiences, share uh, ways of doing things, and we do that once a month. And that's been a new thing. So here was me, I came to town, you know, a year ago, and found one gourd person, and then you find another, and so now we've gathered all these people together, so we have great fun playing. Do you have a website? Uh, we are um, we are uh, um, we are under the umbrella of the um, what do they call themselves the basketry guild of Portland I think I don't I don't know exactly how that works anyway so they publicize us put us in their newsletter and some of our members uh, also are weavers so they weave on to gourds something like. Something like this. They do this, but very fancy, you know, wonderful things. Since I've been here at Currents Gallery, I've been teaching in our backdoor studio, which is an excellent place because I've got enough electricity. We're out of the wind and the rain, and um, we can accommodate like 14 people working on gourds at one time. So I teach some carving, wood burning, projects, all of those things. And, in, and actually intend to do a lot more. There's a, there are a million YouTube videos on how to, and we have some amazing gourd artists that are very generous with that information. And um, they do classes all over the country, and there are gourd festivals to go to where you can take classes and learn specific skills or come away with a skill and a new project. And uh, speaking of that, those gourd festivals do a lot of competitions. And for, gosh, the last five years, I've entered the Arizona uh, Gourd Society's festival, which is held in Casa Grande, Arizona. And um, been fortunate enough to win a lot of blue ribbons there on my, on my work. So that pleases me. And it's nice to be judged by your peers as um, being a a worthwhile art object.